Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the NECC. Welcome back to week one. Welcome. Oh, man, I think this is cool. I have the funny mic on. We're going to change that on a second. So, um, hey. Hi, Foof. <laughs> I'm going to break everything production on our end. Hey, it's week one for us too, Odd, right? You know, you're going to have the yeah, blunders oh yeah. on the uh, on the back end, blunders on the front end. We sat in this call for 15 minutes, and I did not notice it. So, Congratulations. <laughs> hey, it's an ACC. It's week one, so let's go. You think it's me? Well, okay. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to hit. It's off totally. Off totally. Oh, oh. Hey. So, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be doing this cast from my PlayStation 5 microphone because apparently that's what my audio is coming through. <laughs> All right. So we have webcam mics, we have normal microphones, and we have PlayStation 5 microphones. But you know what we also had? We had a 3-1 ahead of us happen before the Aggies falling to UAH. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're going to talk about Grace Harbor Chokers going up against WCU State. Western Colorado University. So these two teams bring it in. We had a little bit of a breakdown before talking about these Grays Harbor team with all of them being freshmen, all of them still trying to decide about what they wanted to do. They're happy to be here, Odd. Absolutely. And who wouldn't be? I mean, when you have a name like Krustaboobin or Krustaboon, we were having a discussion on this too. Not sure how to pronounce that properly. Oh, like so you're, all, you're, all you're doing is just there to have a great time. So with that being said, the roster that we're looking at today for the Chokers, first off, S tier name right there. We're going to have Krustaboobin, Ripe Dolphin 223, and uh, Akoshi Shadow. I almost screwed that up. I had to look at it again. Uh, so <laughs> some phenomenal it. names there for a phenomenal team. Foof, why don't you tell us about Western Colorado University? Well, you know, we have to start with Swish, the junior, then mm. JoJo's Mojo, another top tier name, another junior, and then Jolly rounding it out as the sophomore. So two old heads and a youngin trying to bring it forth for WCU Slate and rocking that Slate Gray. Gotta say, that is an underutilized color name. Slate is just awesome. And so Absolutely. I have... I have excitement, not only for the team names, but for the player names. And because, odd, we have microphones correct. Mm -hmm. We are getting ready. Actually, first and foremost, I am sitting beside you in the metaverse here, side by side. And we're getting ready to watch Rocket League. Mm -hmm. NECC Rocket League, specifically. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm just, I, I'm literally on the edge of my seat. So if I fall, if you're allowed to crash, I've actually fallen over. But it's okay. <laughs> I can get up. Oh my goodness. But as we were saying, it is week one. It is time to see what these guys are made of. They've had mm -hmm. a winter break, maybe a winter semester if they're on that kind of school grind to get ready for this new uh, for this new season. Some of the rosters may have shifted around. Some of the rosters may have been the same. But for this one, this is, should be a very, very interesting Navigator Pacific Frontier matchup. Oh, we're in it. <laughs> in the blue and Western Colorado University in the yellow. So both teams starting early and Akoshi Ooh. already seeing that near post wide open 1-0. And already, just right off the bat, we're going to have Western Colorado coming out with the early, excuse me, we're going to have Grace Harbor coming out early with the offense of who Akoshi was playing for. We're off to a fantastic <laughs> start here, Foof. Well, 1-0 here. Start. That's exactly what you want to start early in the season, early in the year, early in the series. I mean, just seeing the near post wide open, taking full advantage of it. The defense reeling here as they're stuck on that defensive third once again. The ball floating midfield, but a big clear all the way down the pitch as it was a soft touch back and forth, back and forth. And now we're getting more into that game one feeling out process as a little bit of two overs out there by Chris Bubin. And now, now another near post play, a pass from Mojo, and that sets up Jolly who knocks it through. And that is going to be the tying score there, this time actually from Western Colorado. Great little passing play here from Western Colorado with Jolly just having really nice forward positioning there uh, to be able to take advantage of a little bit of a defensive misposition on the goal line there from GHCB. So tying things up just barely 30 seconds into the game. Don't really have much to say on how everybody's playing so far because it's only been 40 seconds, but we'll see how things go from here. Well, tied back where we started odd, but both teams have found Pater. In the first minute, is JoJo trying to go to the same well again? Swish, soft touch, but he cannot find it. That pinnick a bit too short. Another touch coming through, but again, 
Swings and a miss. Pass midfield, trying to find something here. Off the backboard, it's going to bounce down. That is all. Players pushing forward as Bruce Dubin having to control this one and saying, all right, boys, circle the wagons. We're going to try again. Is he a bit too overzealous off the ceiling? And so a change of possession means a change of guard as both teams back in midfield. One thing I am noticing is that it looks like both these teams are still kind of trying to figure out their each other's positioning, right? Like you're not seeing super heavy offense, super heavy defense. And speaking of defense, where was the defense? The defense got caught out. You see Kruitz the movement. He's been the third man so many times and rotating off to the side instead of staying in that middle third going for what probably was a boost or a missed call in rotations opens the door and it's 2-1. 2-1 with 3 minutes and 30 seconds left to play here. It's been a really good showing from both of these teams. Western Colorado has been the one to come away with the points as Grays Harbor is looking to tie things back up here. Offense trying to get going here for the blue team as Spartan tried to put that one on. Spartan, was that, uh, is that Swish who's played as Spartan? I do not know. That would make sense to me right now is another touch coming through. Looking for an ear post play, and that has been the moniker for both of these teams. Not looking to go across the net, but staying in the exact lanes where they are. Staying in your lane, perhaps, as another 50 in front of the net. Jolly wanting to find his own dish, but he can't find it. The ball floating still on that Dominus. A flick over one, wanting to find something off the sidewall here, and does. But no boost means possibly no problem. More pressure mounting here as it's in such an awkward spot for the Jokers. I got to figure it out. I think that's going to be Ripe Dolphin, uh, who's showing up on screen as the Spartan, as WCU trying to get some offense going here, but the defense from Gray's Harbor is going to be able to stand strong as Jolly was trying to be in there with JoJo to get a double, uh, a double commit goal. Don't normally like seeing those, but sometimes you need to when you've got the defense on the back wheels as Swish. Just not quite able to get a 50 there with a Koshi. Swish. Trying to approach this one slowly off the side wall, taking it into the right wing corner off the backboard. No one there for the follow on score. So that's going to be, I still think that's right. Dolphin trying to put the offense going here. Koshi brings that one off the left side bar. Oh, slowing it back down, trying to find something. But again, Mountaineers out in front by one. Don't have to push too hard. They just need to possess the ball and stay in control. Jolly. On a cut here, can't get to it. Clear coming off on the nose of one. He tries to find another. JoJo getting a bit too errant. And no, the ball stays with him. If you love something, let it go, apparently. And right now, it's working on the offensive end. Jolly, slow 50 there. I mean, it's a big, clear opportunity. And it uh -oh. is going towards the net, but it's not going to be on. It's a flipping of the field moment here. Odd is now teams having to go from offense. Even as a double commit could be dangerous here. But JoJo there, ready and waiting. That was great patience there from JoJo, seeing both of his teammates double committing and opting to play a little bit slower on the goal line so that he could still be there and be able to make the save. As Akoshi gets it past one, that's going to be off the crossbar. Is this going to be the first goal of the game, or excuse me, second goal of the game for Grace Harbor? Yes, it will. And that's going to be the Spartan, who I still think is right, Dolphin, getting the second score of the game there for Grace Harbor. Well, no matter what, the Spartan in the middle of the field, finding the middle of the net and tying it back up. And so... Just as we started this series, we find ourselves back at a stalemate. The teams finding pay dirt twice, making their moments happen. But all that matters now is finding perhaps a third and golden goal. Spartan wanting to sign off on this one, wanting to double tap, but the Finnick of Swish just in the way in time. It's been some great back and forth offense here between both of these teams. A lot of these scores have come from just the crushing offensive pressure as Spartan tries to get another shot on here, but that is going to be turned away by Swish. Gray's Harbor trying to get this going again as the clock starts to tick down. They want to take this from being a tie and not keep it into overtime as JoJo's tries to get a touch over the top of one. Cruz movement is back for that jolly. Tries to float over the top of two. That was a great pinch off the sidebar there by the defense from Gray's Harbor. So now it's going to be an offensive reset here for Western Colorado as Cruz movement tries to push it to the left wing side. And the left wing side here trying to find a touch. That's two cars going for the same ball. Usually, we're not a fan of it, and I will say, odd, uh, you don't have to play defense if you score. But when you double commit going to the corner, that means there's no real shot taker. Spartan having to wait for this one. Seeing the Blue Seas part swish, wanting one for the road uh -oh. off the ceiling, has two teammates there. Jolly, Jolly signs off on it, but he can't push it through. The tires and undercarriage means it's no goal. And Jolly fans in the chat throwing their hands in the air, punching air, possibly a swish, though. Ooh. Trying to bury it, but cannot. And so the Mountaineers kicking themselves as two golden opportunities go by the wayside.
and the Mountaineers kicking themselves and the Chokers breathing a sigh of relief as that was two potential game ending goals that end up not going through as Jojo's Mojo not able to connect on that one. But Swish is now going to send this one back to the Grays Harbor side of the pitch. Koshi collecting this one in the corner. My bad, didn't mean to step on you. I'm going to step on you as that is another <laughs> Goomba stomp there in the corner. Both teams fighting over the ball. As I, 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 heard, I heard you take the little breath. And so as I held my breath here, the ball mm. floating in the air, Koshi slowing it down. I feel like both teams are at the moment in those racing movies where they're shifting like 87 times in the action scenes, just yep. going back and forth. And that's oh. going to be the double tap. Sec finding that second touch, not a double tap, but a second touch from Akoshi. Hello and goodbye. And this is a great initial touch from Cruiser Movement to set this up for Akoshi. And Akoshi just going to bury that one over the top of one defender into the upper third of the goal. So Gray's Harbor going to take game one here in this best of... Five? Five. Series? Five. Best of five series. Ah, see? I know how to count. Best of five <laughs> series. Uh, very, very close game. Obviously, going to overtime, but even before we hit that overtime, it, it was kind of hit or miss as to who was actually going to come away with that. As every time there was a goal scored, another one was answered immediately. Uh, so just fantastic showing from both teams there. I think the biggest thing that I noticed is it looked like there were a couple times when Western Colorado had some scoring opportunities, but they were playing a little bit too passive. Like, I was noticing the second and third man would way far back far at like back. midfield yeah like way mm -hmm. far at like midfield or farther when a shot was right in front of the net for them to try and take it so th if they can kind of get their offensive rotations to be a little tighter you don't have to play defense that hard like you can take some risks every now and again there's three people on the field leave one guy back have the second guy right where he needs to be uh you know so if, if they can get those tightened up i think they'll have a much better chance in game two i think the biggest thing is you look at the shot ratio that's 11 mm -hmm. on the side of western colorado the mountaineers had more shots to the seven of the chokers. I mean, it was just all offense at spurts. It was a lot of shots and they backed off a lot of shots and they backed off. And again, off the back of Jolly having the two goals and then a chance for a third falling through. It, it's just a bit strange to me. You rarely see a team shoot as much as they did and giving up five saves like that and unable to find the back vent more. Well, a lot of those shots, like kind of what we were saying, were ringing off the sidebar. A lot of them went off crossbar. And again, it comes down to like some like the defensive plays from Grace Harbor were very good. You know, so it, it's it, if, if that's why I'm saying Western Colorado kind of needs to use a little bit more team play. It almost looked like they were trying to rely too heavily on solo play for a lot of their offense. Uh, so if they can get a lot more passing plays together or, or get some like small passes going up down the field to kind of open things up for a solo play, I think we'll see a lot more successes. Speaking of open things up, Jolly had a chance at an open net there off the demo switch to the backboard. Spartan's going to be there, not going to get the touch. Switch is going to float that in. Goal number one goes to Western Colorado. That's a big find, and this time Swish having just enough in the tank. That Phoenix spinning, turning, twirling, perhaps pirouetting to find the touch, and the Black Phoenix making its mark known. 1-0 for the Mountaineers. Great start there from Western Colorado coming off a game one win to score the first goal in game two. That's exactly what you want to do to get momentum going back in your favor. As Krustabuvin tries to center this up for Spartan. Spartan with a floater of his own, but that one's not going to fall Wait in. Koshi tried to drop it in, but great presence there from Swish on the goal line to not panic and be able to make that beautiful save. Just over 60 seconds gone here in this game. Western Colorado still up by one, but Gray's Harbor knocking on the door. I will say, I, I, there's one Dominus that happens to have a blue paint job on the Arch team, and it keeps throwing me every mm -hmm. time I see it. As Swish gets 50 off of the ball. Poor fella, get out of here. Swish finds it again. Jolly looking for that clear. The blue Dominus I was talking about. Spartan on the, the backboard. He's actually going to be set up by the defender, perhaps. It's Whoa. all calculated as Jolly gets it back in the field. Koshi Shadow putting a touch on. That's going to be on, technically. And now a dangerous spot to be if you are the Mountaineers. They are low on boost, out of position, and possibly out of time if they're not careful. But JoJo with two big wins at the point of attack to clear it all the way and give them room to breathe. And this crushing offensive pressure here from the Mountaineers is exactly what they need to do. They are trying to get this second Cushion goal uh, so that they don't run into a similar situation that they ran into last game uh, where Grays Harbor is able to come back and, and make things interesting. As Krusta Movement tried to take that over the top of a defender, but great uh, defensive pressure there from Jolly turns that one away. Now we're going to see Spartan on the sidewall. Not quite enough boost. Tried to get the pinch there at the end, but JoJo was going to clear that one away. Cruz now up towards the back wall himself. Akoshi. Trying to be there. That's going to be a double commit on offense, and Spartan is going to have to back off. I like that choice there. Like, 
Grace Harbor needs to get a goal, but they don't want to sacrifice their positioning that hard that Spartan has to overcommit oh, on that dunk. Oh, what a dunk from Akoshi towards the sidewall. Is he going to get it? Akoshi scores it. That's going to be the tying goal for Grace Harbor. A lot of times you're going to see players find themselves in this moment where there's nothing but green grass and an open net and they rush it. Akoshi realizes it. I don't know if it was called or not, but slows down, makes sure it's going in and ties this game up exactly at the midway point. Yeah, hi, it's me. I'm the guy that does that frequently. I like an open net is the scariest thing in the world for a player like me as Jojo. What a touch sending that one towards the Grays Harbor. Goal there, Akoshi is gonna save that one away. Swish opting to play back. Two minutes left to play here, Foof, and this is just as back and forth as game one was. Akoshi, the dunk master. The Matumbo finger wag, if it could be in the Nothing game. In my house. <laughs> get up and sent through the defender. That was a challenge and a half, and hats be tipped to the charter players as that is a 2-1 score. And this is this is what uh, Grays Harbor needed to answer with to kind of hold on to that momentum that they had from that game one lead. Man, I am loving how back and forth this is so far. Two minutes still left to play in this game, but it feels like we've been playing forever at this point. Almost a uh, heavyweight bout of sorts. We're seeing haymakers being thrown left and right, right and left. There's now another touch off the backboard, but that one clear. Koshi Shadow, Spartan seeing an opportunity, but it's quickly shut down. Bruce DeBubin looking far post, but two defenders are there. Doja wanting to find a clear here and going to pop it up high, up and over one, but the Spartan is there to find the slowdown. Turned by Jolly, means a big 50. It's going to rest on the nose of Bruce DeBubin. No, he's a bit too aggressive. Jolly sees a chance here, but the slow play from Makushi just keeps it out of harm's way. And I like Jolly's choice there to, to kind of go for that backflip and slow himself down as that almost ended up ringing in there as Swish. Trying to keep the offense going here for the Mounties. That is just, very, excuse me, the Mountaineers, as that just barely is not able to ring in. Akoshi trying to get some control, not able to get it over the top of Jolly, but Cruz moving. Trying to take this one out of his own right wing corner. That one's going to be a touch across the net by Jojo. Akoshi trying to collect this one up. Does lose the 50 there to Jolly. Jolly trying to get this center, but Cruz moving. They're on the goal line. 50 seconds left, Foo. And so far, the defense for Grace Harbor standing strong. Standing strong, it's all about bending but not breaking another big 50. That Domina is so tall in those points mm -hmm. of attacks. Bushy, more touch, trying to find him back over there. Just a pinch to kill more time. And again, left and right, right and left, back and forth and back and forth. As they just keep this ball possibly out of harm's way now. Mojo, though, you got to hold on to that a little bit longer. He had such a good opportunity. Maybe they can find something here past midfield, opening a door, but again, Bruce the moving more in the way, taking control and slowing it down. Now only 10 ticks left for the Mountaineers to find one for the road. Koshi trying to drive this one away. Swish with the touch up. Oh. Jojo not quite able to get there. I think he got bumped by got Swish bumped. a little bit. Yeah, and Koshi is going to just send that one away. And, oh, it looked like Western Colorado was going to have a chance right at the end there, but unfortunately was not to be as Grays Harbor is going to take the second game and take a 2-0 lead here in the series. 2-0, feeling confident, and this time, a total Jeez. of seven shots again. I think we've seen that number before from Grays Harbor as the Choker's doing a great job there, allowing only seven, and so they closed down the shots a little bit. They stepped up on the defensive side. Again, six saves. They had five in the first one, so six saves here, and so they're getting... I don't want to say they're getting better. They're still allowing so much pressure from that offensive side. I want to see a little bit more at the midfield point to turn it into offense sooner so you don't allow that many shots, but it's exactly what you want to see if you're a Joker fan. Well, the other thing that I think that Western Colorado needs to focus on here going into game three so that they don't get 3-0 swept in week one, which you never want to do, uh, no. is there is one particular problem that I've noticed for them every single game, and that problem's name is Akoshi Shadow. That was oh, the yeah. second game in a row that Akoshi had over 650 score. Second game. Like, literally just carrying at that point. I mean, it's not really a carry because if you look, his teammates are obviously right there, but 90% of the offense that they're doing is going through Akoshi one way or the other. So if Western Colorado can figure out a way to kind of cage him in and shut him down, that is going to do so much for them in terms of shutting down the overall offense for Grays Harbor and might start giving the Mountaineers a chance to get some offense going in their favor as well. I think the biggest thing that we want to hark to, if you are looking at this Mountaineers team, is what you talked about, Odd. What you talked about... Between games one and games two, 
is their offense. They're a mm -hmm. bit too far spread out, and that stems from these transition plays. They're pushing the ball too far up the field too quickly as Cruz de Vuben sees an opportunity trying to take advantage of it. Oshi said his name so many times trying to find that post there, but JoJo's Mojo just enough in time. He's got the Octane in front. He needs to find one more touch. It's going to slow it down, keeping it in the mix right now as both teams having some difficult chances with the defense standing tall. Jolly trying to keep the offense going here in favor of Western Colorado, but is going to oh, have to back no off on that one. No boost to keep going. Swish with the 50 with Akoshi, leaving it in position for Spartan. Is that's going to be a whiff there from, I believe that was Jojo, who wasn't quite able to connect. Akoshi with a chance at an open net. Jolly oh, what a save. is going to get there. The length of the Dominus so critical in making some of these defensive plays here, Booth. Having enough reach to make it across the net in time. Jelly and company feeling good, but not feeling great. Down no goals in this game, but two games in the series. It's Bruce Dubin putting it across the field here. Jolly asked one, but bumping another. And so, Oshi control, big 50 there. It's it at midfield and up here is Swish to put it off the sidewall. I don't like that touch, though, as it's to no one but the defense. Jolly with a 50, but another turnaround. This could be Chris Dubin's one to go, but he can't find it. The Dominus a bit too errant in the air, and Swish slowing it down. Another pass midfield, but snuffed out by Jolly. Spartan trying to collect this one in the left wing side, excuse me, right wing side, as JoJo fires that towards the back wall. That's ugh, might have had a chance, but Crusoe moving doing a great job there, getting the defensive touch as Akoshi Shadow now floating this one off. That's actually going to hit the ceiling. Jolly has a chance. Jolly taking advantage of the mistouch there from Akoshi, and that is going to be another opening goal here from Western Colorado. Well, this was exactly how the Mountaineers had their money in game one. Riding on the back of Jolly had two, could have had a third to put it away. But could not find it. And so getting the hot hand going for this Mountaineer team is exactly what they want. And so perhaps a two horse Jolly. race as Jolly wanted it, but the angle not there as the Dominus couldn't get off the ground fast enough. And that unfortunately comes to a, a, a little bit of a downside with the Dominus where sometimes you can hit the ball a little harder than you think you're going to just because of the length of the hitbox. And again, Jolly was trying to make something happen, but again, too much power on the touch. Now JoJo sending that one towards the Gray Harbor Wait net, a minute. and Akoshi gets saved on the goal line by a teammate. That could have been devastating for Gray's Harbor. That ball just dropped like a rock in the lake, and that was another shot oh. from Jolly. You know what? We're going to the right wall. One, two, three times would be the charm. This time, it's not a self dish, but a pass from Swish. And this is the offensive rotations that I have been begging the Mountaineers to get into for the last two games. They're finally starting to get these tight rotations, and that's what allowed that constant offensive pressure in the corner to come in, and they were finally able to just whittle down the defense from Grays Harbor until they found a hole in the wall and just slotted the ball through it as a coach right not wall. able to get there in time. Jolly with the hat trick, and we're not even halfway done with the game yet. Another big 50. Spartan can't get to it, and that is such an aggressive foot from Mojo. You don't expect to see that, and all of a sudden, Jolly blink and you miss it. Three goals back into this game and back possibly into the series of the Mountaineers. Well, not only do you not expect to see it at all, you don't expect to see it out of the Mountaineers because we haven't seen that kind of pressure from them all series. And then just all of a sudden here in game three, the, the three, they decided, all right, you know what? Fine, we're going to actually start playing some offense here. And my goodness, is it paying off for them here, Foof? I think it's just a return to form from game one. Remember, 11 shots in that game. That's true. And it true. wasn't consistent. It was just finding opportunities. And guess who it is on the right wall again? Oh. But this time, the defense able to slow it down and make a save. And even Jolly and chat having to exclamate of what a save. But Jolly in control right now and in the lead of the Mountaineers as the Chokers trying to find a mark right now as they have been stuck on this blue third for most of this game. Just over 90 seconds Double. left to play here. That had a chance for Jolly to get the fourth, and that one from uh, Switch is going to just barely ring off the top corner. I apologize. I'm having trouble reading. It is so exciting watching this game as Jolly now trying to keep this one away from Cruz to move, and he's going to try and look for a pass, but Switch going to beat him to it. So Akoshi having to try and collect this one has one to contend with JoJo. Again, with these lightning fast challenges, I'm just loving the offensive pressure I'm seeing out of Western Colorado. They just have to make sure that they don't overdo it and allow Grace mm -hmm. Harbor a chance to get back here in this game three. That's the big thing. You like to cook and you like to bake, but you can't overcook and you can't overbake or else you end up burnt and so does your kitchen. And right now, 
Looking good. Thriving Bakery 3-0, but they do not want to overstep. They swish up in the air, but not up in time. Bruce Boobin has the touch, has the clear. Now it's about what can you find more here as Joker's down by three and only 50 seconds left to find an answer. Yushi over one, possibly over two. Swish handing it off to a teammate. Jojo in such a bad spot. A monk could open the door here. He's going for the pump again, but the secondary touch will clear it out. Bruce Boobin was looking for Whoa. a pinch off his backboard there, but not quite as much power as he was hoping to see. So Swish able to put that right back in front of the net. Jojo was looking for it. What a touch from Swish to keep it again in the offensive presence here for Western Colorado. Danger. Grace Harbor trying to get a shot here, and Spartan is going to score it for the Chokers. I just want to talk about the slow roll forward we see from Chris Boobin, right? You might not see it. You're going to see it just here Whoop. trying to catch that Dominus as it lands. He's a bit too aggressive on the push, but it doesn't matter. It's enough pressure. It opens the door. 20 seconds. It's doable. Not impossible. Improbable. Not impossible. As we're going to see Swish getting a demo in the corner there. So that's going to shut things down a little bit for the chokers as Cruz to move and try to pass that down to Akoshi. Akoshi not quite able to connect. There. Nine seconds starting to tick down. Cruz to move and trying to keep the offense going here for Grays Harbor, but the ball is just gonna ring around on this midfield pitch. Swish just played around with it. What a pitch coming out of Jolly there, but that is gonna go backboard. Cruz to move is gonna put it on the grass and Western Colorado not out of the woods yet. Oh. Slate able to answer the call there and again on the back of a very stellar offensive performance, but it did slow down at the end of the game. Eight shots coming off that team, allowing only five, but four saves. That's the number I want you to focus your eyes on, chat. This is what we haven't seen from the Mountaineers, stingy defense. They couldn't find, I, I want to say, just like a run of defense at times, where if they gave up pressure, it eventually had a quick goal and they weren't making saves. They were just giving up touches off the backboard. Well, another thing, too, I, I was saying that one of the biggest things that they needed to focus on was shutting down Akoshi, and my goodness, they did, did they it. shut him down? He went he went two games over 600 score. Game three, he scores 222, and it's Jolly that gets the 600 score this game. And and so that was exactly the kind of turnaround that Western Colorado needed to have. I, 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 I want to say something, but I'm not going to say it because I don't want to put it in the universe, but you know what I'm thinking, Foof. Yeah, you know, all, I can, <laughs> all I'm thinking right now is obviously the coach – West Colorado State brought them together and said, guys, we did really good in game one. Game two, not so much. Let's do what we did in game one. Ready? Break. And Jolly was like, oh, yeah, just score five head. My no. bad. And <laughs> just started, was like, oh, yeah, the right wall will hit it. Ball we'll hit it. We'll hit it. <laughs> wall plus ball plus Jolly equals a goal. Apparently, if you are WCU Slayton, that is the recipe for a win. Now we have to see if they can bake another as they found their way back into the series. A two on a fair in game number four here, Odd. And looking to see if the Chokers can possibly close this series out in week one. We take it to the mythical oh, land of game was five. That? What a save coming out of Western Colorado. That had a chance to be the opening goal for Grays Harbor. Now, one thing I was going to point out is that Western Colorado has scored the first three, the first goal of the last three games consecutively, I believe. So an opening goal here from Grays Harbor would go a long way in favor of them trying to close this series like out touch. and come away with a win as a, as a coach. Back to form. What a play here from the Chokers. It's a beautiful idea of realizing I'm by myself, so let me give something. And Cruz to move and clearing out the extra defender so it becomes a true one-on-one. -on -one. Akoshi using the post. 1-0 here for the Chokers. Oh, speaking of that post, I can almost guarantee you that he saw the ball going towards the post and it was like slow motion. No! And then it dropped in and he went, okay, cool. <laughs> no, he called bank the entire way. Okay, yeah, calculated. Fair. fair enough. It's, it's always calculated. Well, Jolly using a bump on his own and that could open up the door far post and it does, but the bounce a bit too high. It's now Swish demoed for their troubles. And it could be an awkward spot to be in if you are the Mountaineers as they've lost their deep defender. They have now had to push up with only two for a small bit. First movement. Wait to find a touch here. Jolly in control right now, but opting to half flip away. Catch it on his own in here. No, he's cut by a teammate. So an awkward spot with all three orange cars into the corner. Cruz moving, giving a lot of time and space here. Koshi in control. Wanting to slow this down. Has a lead. Has a team. Just wanting to rest right now and probably find another golden opportunity. Jojo's waiting for this one in the corner. Tried to get an angle there, but not quite enough power on the touch. A Spartan, speaking of not enough power, just not able to touch the ball there as he was trying to get the offense going there for the Chokers. 
Three minutes, 30 seconds left here. JoJo going up, not quite able to put that one on target. So Gray's Harbor now having another chance to get some offense going, but Swish going to be a problem in the corner as JoJo's again with the 50. And these challenges from Western Colorado have just been so good over the last two games after seeing almost nothing out of them in game two. It's been almost a complete 180 from them in terms of physicality here in games three and the start of game four. All bouncing back and forth. Another double commit here on the side of the Mountaineers as the Chokers feeling good right now. They have a lead. They haven't been this point in two games almost, it feels like. As yes, they did win two games ago, but it was such a tight one. And so you're just wondering back and forth, can they find an answer, especially losing like the way they did with Jolly getting the hat trick, feeling good. Having a lead right now, out in control, now playing dangerously Ooh. as Jolly heard his name being called and wanting to be like his name. Unfortunately, still down one just at the midway point. Well, that was a dangerous touch in front of the net by Spartan as well, but he was able to get it out. Speaking of Spartan, wanted to try and get the redirect, but was not quite able to turn around on it. Jolly getting the pinch with Krustaboob and trying to put it to a teammate. This one just kind of floating at the midfield for now. Jolly trying to collect this one as Spartan is going to be there, but not quite able to connect with it. So Jolly now with a chance, losing that 50 with a Koshi. Krustaboob playing this one into the corner. JoJo's up, not able to connect, and so that is going to fly back towards the Grays Harbor side of the pitch. So Grays Harbor kind of had a little bit of offense going there, but nothing to show for it just yet. Well, it's they've got one goal to show for it right now, and that's all they might need in this game as we have 111 seconds left, and still not a lot of offense from both sides. We've seen some decent opportunities, but just kind of disjointed touches is another one going towards the backboard, not the back of the net. Spartan side to side here, opting to try and slow it down and continue to milk this clock and not allow the Mountaineers consistent possession. That's going to be a bump off of the backboard. Akoshi wanted the Doomsy but couldn't find it. And so Spartan losing control here. Chris moving to 50 to keep it at midfield. And now a whiff means Spartan and company get a free turnaround. Akoshi, nice job keeping some ball control there, but Swish was finally able to steal it away from him as Cruz Movement is trying to keep the offensive pressure here going for the Chokers, but Western Colorado trying to get their own going. Spartan trying to pass to Akoshi. Akoshi is able to get that 50 and towards the white wall. Not quite a lot of boost to work with there and is going to lose control of that one to JoJo's Mojo. Minute left here odd, under 60 seconds, possibly 60 seconds in week one for both of these teams. The Mountaineers cannot find one as the Chokers wanting to hold on to this lead. Jojo's Mojo, not able to get there. Ball pass midfield, Ooh. but Jolly just enough to keep it away. Now Jolly wanting to play some offense here, but only 16 boost in that Dominus. Not enough to find the touch. There's movement. This is the probably third or fourth time we've seen him just floating midfield, waiting for the ball to follow him in the right space at the right time. It's Jojo Mojo, again, overzealous on the push, turns into what should have been a change of possessions, but they passed it right back. Jolly had the idea, saw the vision of a teammate, but couldn't get the pass there. Yeah, a little bit too much on the touch from Jolly, so Swish not, was not able to connect on what would have been the tying goal. 15 seconds left to play here. This ball dangerously floating around in front of the Mountaineers side of the pitch, but that's going to be a great clear there from Swish to try and get some offense going for Western Colorado late here. Let's Two see. seconds left to the backboard. Jolly, that's got a chance it's to there. go. JoJo, Swish, back down oh. to JoJo, but no, and that is going to be a heartbreaking end to week one for the Western Colorado University Mountaineers. Uh, they can't do this again. Oh my goodness. You know who it was in game one, right? Uh, perhaps. It was the Red Finnick. Oh. It was Swish. It bounces on the goal line, and this time, redemption at the undercarriage of that car again to extend this series. This and is this why you don't time, play the <laughs> wide left and soft. Oh my Short goodness. Short left and then Go wide ahead. left. So we tried and saw a moment, perhaps, of redemption in week one, but we fall just sort as the Chokers able to survive and claim a 1-0 start on top of a 3-1 day. Got to say, a great showing for both squads. Absolutely, and I was waiting until the match was over to finally say it. I was hoping that the Chokers weren't <laughs> going to live by their name and do How that. How dare you? And they didn't. <laughs> so I'm very proud of them for not doing that. Uh, but uh, phenomenal effort out of Western Colorado. Don't get me wrong. Like, they definitely made it a match towards the end there. And barring two of just the most unfortunate Missed touches in game one and then again here in game four just barely swish not able to connect with the touch and just ah you hate to see it i i think i have more respect 
for Swish than I might have had at the beginning of the because you have a player that might not find that goal in game one, and then when they find themselves in that spot in game four to force game five, they might be hesitant to pull the trigger. Wasn't hesitant at all. Full sending it, knowing this is my chance. Keep that mentality, Swish. There is going to be a chance at some point in this season that that mentality is going to push you guys into a game five or win an entire series. And so I want to see it, but hats off to the team known as the Chokers. I mean, it got dicey in there, but they're able to do it 3-1. Yeah, phenomenal job being able to hold on to uh, the series lead and take it to a week one series win. You always want to start week one off with Definitely a W first. Now, 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 to if in favor of Western Colorado here, it's only week one. So it taking is. a loss here isn't necessarily a bad thing. You've got a ton of time. You know what your mistakes were. You know, get back in the film room on Monday and get and just get things worked out. Come back again next Friday, and they'll be right back in this. Well. Getting a chance to step back is both of these teams as they're going to enjoy the vibes, enjoy the vibes and see what went right, what went wrong. But we're also going to be taking a step back as we have another match to be played. The OC Eagles playing up against the UBCO Blue. So that'll be a challenger Southwest division coming at you in a bit. I'm Foof, this is Zod. Be right back.